Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon for some, I'm sure. Um, we're going to get into the Fusion 360 interface and not really the, the specific design interface, more just navigating how do we get to our files, how do we get to you know active projects and whatnot. Um, Autodesk likes to uh, likes to get in and change some things as 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 they roll through different updates, and I felt like this could be a, a pretty beneficial topic to uh, to discuss and maybe give you guys you guys some some ideas and maybe some shortcuts on on how to get around inside of the, the Fusion box. So, um, as Ashley said, we've got the uh, the question panel down at the bottom you can uh you can ask those questions i am by myself today so i'll look at that question panel when uh, when we get done with the presentation and and we'll answer whatever questions you guys have and if it gets to the point where we we don't get through all of them we'll keep track of those and i'll get those answered for you um you guys should be familiar and if you're not um this is just a, a quick page on how to access Autodesk Fusion. Um, you should see it either in your uh, your desktop app, or you would see it in your Autodesk account. And uh, Fusion 360, you can download that, um, and that will give us the interface that we're going to look at here in just a little bit. Um, so there's uh, so there are different different little steps to navigating the interface, and some changes that uh, that Autodesk has made within Fusion. Um, we're going to talk about the uh, the Fusion 360 data panel or or home screen, if you will, um, as well as accessing the uh, the Fusion Team uh, cloud site. We're going to talk about collaborating with uh, with team members inside of your organization and outside of your organization. You can invite um, vendors or or customers to look at your designs if you so desire. Uh, let's see here. Um, we're going to look at how to administer one of those fusion teams and what, uh, you know, what they can access and how to, how to uh, set that access up for them. And then finally, we'll get into the interface itself and, and define some of the uh, settings and preferences within fusion 360, some of those application options that you may be more familiar with in, in some of the other CAD programs. And there's one little bonus topic that, uh, that we'll talk about. Hopefully that will help things uh, or make things a little bit more helpful for you guys. Um, so the Autodesk Fusion 360 homepage um, data panel, whatever you want to call it, um, has changed over the last couple few months actually as they've sent updates out for Fusion. Um, we can now see two different little panels on the, the left hand side of the screen. Those are the the team panel where we can access um, teams that we're a member of, whether we've created those, that team or whether we've joined other teams. Um, if we have created a team, we've got access to an administration panel. You can kind of see the little blue gear here on the, the top left picture. That allows us to administer that team, invite members, remove members, change how they can access files. Um, we could do some of those things and Get access. We can also directly access the team site on the web. It's a, it's a cloud site. Um, and just as a as a reminder, and certainly in in uh, Fusion, they they remind you quite often that you must be a member of a team. Um, you have to create your own to get things started. And you may never use that team. You may it may just sit there, and and you're a member of that one team. But then you can join other teams as you get invited, um, if necessary. The uh, the data panel also gives us access to the projects within the team, and we can start a new design, save it into a project. We can open up an existing design. We can review the different projects within the given team, and if we've got the Fusion Manage extension, we can actually look at charts as far as the, the progress of the different um, different components within a project. Um, we can look at any outstanding work for change orders and review our, uh, our recently viewed items. Um, the project panel itself allows us to, to set the active project, obviously view the folder structure and files within that project. 
and we'll have access to upload additional files or create additional folders depending on um, depending on our role within that project. Going just a little bit deeper, um, we can look at a details flyout panel, and that allows us to manage some of the members. We can invite or remove members. Um, we can also set who can actually see our project, um, who can uh, who can access this. Uh, makes things kind of nice. From within the Fusion interface. Um, we can actually jump to the uh, the team web portal. Um, each team is assigned a unique URL, and we'll take a look at that here in just a minute. Um, we can view or create projects in folders, files, if we need to upload files. Um, we can view files from the web and actually measure, mark up, print. Uh, we can add comments to that. And this allows for some of that sharing um, even outside of the organization. Um, allows us to give uh, give access to those members who, who may need to view what's going on. Um, if we're going to open our files that we see in uh, from the team web portal, we must have that Fusion desktop app installed. Something to keep in mind. Inside the Fusion interface, we're going to look at some of the different prefer preferences. And we can access this by selecting on the uh, the user icon up in the top right corner. And select preferences and, and inside our preferences box we'll see some general settings where we can set languages um, we can set what graphics driver to use or whether it's just automatically selected for us um, and then some zoom preferences for model orientation pan zoom and, and orbit shortcuts as well as setting that reverse direction sometimes we prefer to have um, have our zooms moving in an opposite direction um, we get access to the API as well as um, some settings for each of the different workspaces, design, manufacture, electronics, um, as well as render, drawing, and, and simulation workspaces. We'll have access to um, some of the token and cloud credits as well. Some of the things that we need to do, like rendering or working through the simulation, we want the those processes to be done on the cloud. And those, of course, take cloud credits. So we'll uh, we can look inside the preferences and see how many credits we have access to. Um, and I believe even in there we can uh, we can order some more and and uh, get those purchased. Um, we've got some settings inside of preferences for the graphics card itself and and how things perform, as well as some remote desktop optimizations. And I'm going to show you something that's um, that's interesting. I found out yesterday actually with the uh, the remote desktop settings and how they can affect our interface. Um, there's some network settings for your IT guys if they need to do some, some proxy requirements, um, if they need to set up some warnings regarding access to uh, the team website, we can see those. And then also some of the, uh, the unit values and display settings for precision, um, the display format, the unit abbreviations or symbols. Um, and then there's separate settings for the simulation and design uh, or generative design workspaces. We can set default units. Um, and again, these are um, these are separate settings for each of the workspaces. Design can be in inches, manufacturing could be in millimeters, um, simulation, generative design, we can we can go back and forth. And there's some additional uh, unit settings obviously in, in simulation for mass and time and heat and so on and so forth. Um, and then there is within these preferences, the ability to opt in to um, new feature reviews. Um, so we can decide, hey, do we, we wanna add these tools to our workflow so that we can see what's coming? Um, or do we, you know, do we wanna stay away from those and, and keep a, a clean and, and a fully functional workspace? We'll also take a, a quick look at the uh, display settings and this is where we're going to see some things happen regarding um, our remote desktop settings relative to um, our ground planes and shadows and whatnot um, this is one of the things that uh, that i discovered as i was working through this and we'll look at you know just the the different shaded views the different visual styles shaded wireframe and with edges without edges yada 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 
Um, we can uh, we can look at background color. It's that stark white background color, so we can look at how to change that, as well as our object visibility, uh, things like work features and sketches, so on and so forth. Um, and then some camera settings, grid and snap settings. We can look at those, and some options for our, uh, our multiple viewports. We'll see those. And I think that's going to bring us into looking at the interface itself. So let me see. Let me go ahead and pull that up. You guys should see this. This is uh, this is the Fusion 360 homepage. And as I mentioned, um, we can come into the, the very top corner and, and look at the uh, the teams that we're a member of. Um, if you see the little blue gear here, um, that means that you are that team's administrator. You created that team. Um, you are uh, you are the boss. You can add people. You can take people away. Um, and that gear, and then the settings down here in the uh, the lower portion of this panel, um, pretty much do the same thing. This one will open settings up on the uh, on the web, so you can uh, you can do your options here. This one will take a look here at a minute. In a minute, we'll open them up here in the uh, the Fusion 360 interface itself. Um, used to be you had a, a single user storage this was when fusion first came out and i've still got access to that some of you may may also have access to that obviously we can start new files here we can uh, we can open up existing files um, we can come in and see our uh, our recent data that we've accessed nothing uh, nothing terribly complicated we can come and look at our different projects that are within that team and if we switch teams then our list is going to be slightly different here and we'll look at selecting the projects here in just a minute. As I mentioned, we uh, we can look at different charts and outstanding work if we have that um, that manage extension enabled. And some of this you may see, and we'll see some things that manage does for us here in just a little bit. Um, but some of the some of the recently viewed items, any bookmarks, if we add a bookmark to um, a specific component. We can see that any change orders that you've got, you can see those. And then just a series of different charts. We can look at, um, look at the varying options um, by change order and and designs in, in given life cycles, so on and so forth. So we can see some uh, some options there. And here is that uh, that settings page. Again, name of the team, um, is file sharing allowed? Who can access this and how can they access it? We can add a domain if we need to. Um, the members that are in this team, I've got myself actually twice, um, just to show that we can uh, we can join members and and we can access the uh, deactivate options. Um, and then there are further controls for what can this other user or these other users actually do. And then once again, the the, uh, the projects, and here are some of those uh, those roles that we can get into. Um, I'm an editor, and if I show team members, um, there's myself. I could make uh, make this person a project admin if I wanted to. Um, there's Mark Dooley, one one of my cohorts, make him a a project admin, and these are all members of this uh, this particular particular project. You can have um, a single team, multiple projects, and different members within each project. You can make all the team members part of, um, you know, part of the uh, of every project. However, you really want to do that. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the projects page here, just a minute, and we'll look at our Fusion class here. We can see the uh, the folder structure, and then as I go in, I can take a look and, and see different items here. We can actually download or export something. We can uh, we can open an object if we want to, rename, delete, so on and so forth. Um, notice too that even though I'm on this homepage, if I don't wanna do anything here and I just really wanna get started with my designs, I can actually jump over to the untitled here and I'm right in, in creating a, a design starting a brand new design. Um, when I get to the point of saving this guy, I can put it in whatever folder, in whatever project within that team that uh, that I so desire. 
Um, so it's a pretty simple process. If I want to go back to that home page, just selecting the house here will take me back in there and I can go through and, and look at any of those things that we've discussed. I'll go ahead and, uh, and take a look at this guy. And you can see kind of a, a quick little preview. We can see, you know, if there were any components involved in this, if this were an assembly, we could see that again, the, uh, the properties. And I've got some, some manage options here for creating item numbers and showing a life cycle and so on and so forth. I haven't put this object into, uh, into the manage extension yet. So we, we don't see anything there. And then of course, if I just want to view this, um, it'll take me into that forge viewer where we can do things like rotate and measure and pan. We've got access to print. Um, we've got access to the model browser if we so desire. Measure, we can take slices. If this were an assembly, I could explode this model and look at the different components. So just neat little neat little items that, uh, that we can do here. Let's go back to this and let's actually open that guy. So once again, we're back in the open uh, open setup here, and I wanted to talk a little bit about those uh, those preferences, um, what that's going to look like just a little bit. So here is that user icon that I was talking about for our preferences within the uh, within the canvas here. Um, if I go in here, select that uh, that icon. Here's preferences. I can grab that guy and. Here is our preferences box. So this is this is like oh say inventors application options or or AutoCAD options, where we can come through and do our different settings. Um, again, we've got user language settings, um, the latest driver for our mouse, and and I happen to have one of the uh, 3D Connection Space mouse, and that's why you see this one here. Um, Selections for our graphics driver. Do we want to direct X11, 9, OpenGL? We can do an auto select as well. That works uh, That works pretty well. And then some of our zoom settings here. Um, we can either do Y up or Z up. We can change that. Um, and we can also alter the, uh, the shortcuts for pan, zoom, and orbit. However we want to see those, whatever we're most comfortable with. Um, we can set our orbit type here, obviously. As we get in, we've got some prompts for the API and, and um, if we're going to do some programming within, uh, within Fusion. I haven't done much personally, um, but um, we can do some of those things and, and set where the, uh, the scripts and whatnot are, um, are added in. Um, settings for our design workspace. We can see some of the options here. Um, look at sketch and edit dimension when created, so on and so forth. Auto hide sketch on feature creation. Um, scale the sketch with the first dimension, we can, we can select that. Uh, the manufacturing workspace, um, settings for, for showing the tool numbers and, and tool offsets and so on and so forth. Um, as well as our electronics workspace, if we want to get in and do some of the colors, I'm not going to go through every single one of these. Um, settings for the drawing workspace, as well as the, uh, the simulation and generative design study workspace. Here is that uh, token and cloud settings that, um, that we wanted to take a look at. What's our balance? Um, what are the, uh, the accounts used for simulation or generative design? Um, and then how much is spent when we do things? So if we if we render, what what does that cost? A final final render quantity or quality, what does that cost? Simulations and generative designs, what is that amount of cost? And then of course the uh, the buy token, so we can select that and pop up with we, we see the uh, the options for buying tokens from the Autodesk site. Let's see here. Some material settings, default material settings. Um, we can create our own libraries in, uh, in Fusion. Uh, if we want to set that as active, we can do so. Um, set our, uh, our default material for when we start a new component. And set our default appearance if we want to, when we start a new component. Um, 
some graphic settings and this is uh this is one of the things that i discovered um yesterday as i was working on this um these settings here limit effects during navigation to maintain frame rate that's one you may want to toggle on or off to see if you're going to get a little bit better performance um we've got some options here for selection display as well as um, degraded dis selection display um limit effects when graphics memory is low so again if you're having performance issues you may want to toggle that one on or off and then this here um, remote desktop optimization i'm going to go ahead and turn this on just a minute and um, turn on a couple of different things here show wireframe during navigation um, render with only basic materials and disable the uh, the advanced rendering effect. And I'll show you this, um, turning these on and, and how that affects our interface here in, in just a little bit. Those network settings that we talked about, um, whether we're gonna use a proxy, no proxy, Windows default, automatic. Um, data collection and use, maybe you don't want all that information being sent back to Autodesk, that's okay. You have the option to uh, to remove these uh, these settings here. Our unit display, so this is where we're gonna set our general precision. We're gonna set angular precision, scientific no notation. Um, how we're gonna see foot and inch display of, um, of our dimensions, our, our, our layout here. Um, let's see, display abbreviations for units, so IN, MM, so on and so forth. Display symbols for units, we can turn that on. Hide the trailing zeros, we can see those. And then when we get into generative, generative design and the simulation workspaces, um, what does that scientific notation precision look like? Um, we can see uh, see some different settings there. And this is kind of overall control. Notice that um, that it's just precision. It's not specifically talking about units themselves. We can see the default units here um, for the design page. We can set those. When you first load up Fusion, it will default to, uh, to millimeter. And you can change on the fly if you want to. Um, but just note that you can also come in and set your preferences. That way you don't have to change it each time. And then the other thing to note is that each of these workspaces has their own set of preferences. So the manufacturing workspace, when we get into laying out those tool paths and whatnot, um, setting the tool sizes, um, we have units for those. And then also for the simulation and generative design, we can see things like length and mass and time and force and so on and so forth. We can, uh, we can adjust those as we need to. And then lastly, within our, uh, our preferences box here, this is that um, preferences to try the preview functionality. So um, an automated modeling mode, I haven't checked into that, I need to. Um, that looks like that might be some, some fun things there. Um, resolve external components. So we can um, we can take a look at that volumetric lattice. I don't even know what that is yet. Um, and then just some some general options here: generative design tools, manufacturing tools. You can see all of these things are in a preview state. Um, not all of them have been included yet. So um, turning these things on, testing them out, giving your input as to uh, as to their value to what uh, what you do. Um, you can add those things in. And let's see, I want to go another step. And let's see, I'm going to say not now because I, I made some changes to the graphics driver as well as the remote desktop. And I don't really want to restart Fusion right at the moment. So let me show you what those changes actually affect. Um, these last three icons are kind of the, uh, the display preferences here. Of course, we've got rotate, look at, pan, zoom, zoom window, and, and fit. 
Um, but these last three give us our options for our visual style, where we can go through shaded, shaded with edges, with hidden edges or wireframe. Um, we can get into the environments and, and take a look at a different environment if that's what we want to do. Um, the effects. Notice that this was bugging me. Why are these things grayed out? I couldn't figure out how to uh, how to adjust that. Well, that comes into those preferences. And if we come back and change the uh, the preferences for the remote desktop optimization, turn that guy off. Um, and then the other thing we might want to adjust is that limit effects when graphics memory is low and limit effects during navigation. I'm going to select apply here and see if it's going to let me do that. Notice my shadows just turned on. They just showed up. And when we go in here, now I have access to turning these things on or off. So just a, a quick note that, um, that if those are grayed out for you, turning off that remote desktop optimization um, may bring these back. Obviously, if you're working remotely, if you're working through remote desktop, you may want those things on. Um, object visibility. So here's all that. Let's turn on the work features. Let's turn off the work features, um, sketches, so on and so forth. And then our camera settings for ortho perspective, perspective with ortho faces. Um, we can also get into our grid settings here. Do we want to show the grid or not show the grid? Do we want to lock the grid or not lock the grid? Locking the grid um, keeps it in a specific size. So even as we scroll, um, it would it would um, stay at that size. Snap to the grid, we can turn that on. We can set um, incremental, incremental movement. So if we're moving something, we can define how far that's going to move um, as a, as a uh, default setting. And then we can come in and set those increments as well. And then finally, the last part of the um, of the view settings here is the multiple views. Um, when you turn multiple views on, you now have the have access to synchronize the views so that if you zoom one, the other three orthographic views zoom. Of course, our our isometric view is a little bit separate. Um, you can turn that off if you want to, so you can zoom just one. Turn that back on and they should all zoom together. And then obviously you can come back to just a single view if you want to. So pretty simple, uh, pretty simple little setup here. Um, beyond this, there are a couple of things that, uh, that you guys might want to know about. Um, I said we would talk about a, uh, a little bonus topic and in doing my own Kind of studies and, and training on uh, on fusion um, I came across this uh, this shortcut or design shortcuts box simply hitting the s key brings this little box up and if we begin to type a a command and then we find like for instance I've got the move copy command and it's actually up here on this maybe I want to uh, to add remove from uh, from the list if I'm just activating the command, I can select it here. I can also go up and select the um, the arrow here, and that brings that into um, the design shortcut. So I can activate without having to come down and, and find the command. I can activate it there. Now, one of the, I'm going to call it shortcomings of this little box is it's not dock dockable unfortunately hopefully at some point they will make it dockable um, but you can slide it off screen if you want you can you can place it wherever you want um, once you get working it it goes away now each of these workspaces we're in design now if i go into say the manufacturing workspace and i'm going to get into you know some of the cam tools um, this too has its own manufacturing shortcuts so once again, I can um, I can look through and, and see if I can find some different tools here. I can I know that there's turning tools, so I can look in and and find the adaptive turning or turning a chamfer or whatever. Um, just a, a quick way to access some of those 
without having to look for it in um, in the different ribbon options or pull downs. So each each workspace design, generative design, they all have their own. Drawing has their own. Um, just different settings that uh, that we can get into. I'm going to run back to our homepage just a minute and take a quick look at um, at the web portal. Um, we'll start by hitting our, our pull down here and let's go ahead and open this team on the web. And same kind of a view. You can you can see your active projects. Here's that project that we've been working on. There's that fusion folder. Um, we can go in and, and look at any of these. Obviously, we can download entire folders if we want to. Here's our air box. So once again, we see that same kind of setup that we can see in Canvas. The nice thing about this is that if we want to invite uh, members to this team, to this, this project, this is the view they're going to get. This is what they would, uh, they would see. And it allows them, them to go in and do some of these, these view things right from a web portal instead of actually having the software uh, to make changes, so on and so forth. So some of these are, if we come back, um, we can look at how to administer these, uh, these projects. We can go directly to, to the project. Here's that um, project details. So once again, we get into managing members, um, inviting members, removing members. Obviously, there's uh, there's one here um, on this setup. So um, if we so desire, we can, we can pull those in. We can look at the content that's in here, um, see some different things that we've uh, we've messed with, um, just different uh, different setups. And then obviously, just navigate back home. We'll go to this guy and, and look at the project details. I think I've got more members in this one. Nope, just me. So just a neat access. And as you can see, each one of these, um, this one is, is in my case, Hagerman 34. Um, and, and it stays that way. Now, if I were to go to a different team, so I'm going to go ahead and close this, uh, this box just a minute. And let's select a different team, say my, my Hagerman team. I can still go to the web view of that, notice that I don't have any any access to administer this this team because I don't own this team. But I can come in. This happens to be the BIM 360 site instead of the the Fusion 360 site. So I can see different options. I can come in and, and again look at different projects, see the project details, view member details. Notice I can't change anything here but I can see the member details, what roles they have, so on and so forth. So just a neat way to access this and share that information with those, uh, those outside users. So I think that, uh, that kind of gets through the topics today. Uh, let me switch back to our slide here. Um, this was our, uh, our bonus topic, talking about the, uh, the S key and getting into those different options for shortcuts, being able to add shortcuts to the uh, to the tab at the top. Um, let's see here. A short discussion about some of the uh, training offerings. We do offer a, uh, a Fusion Design new user class. We cover everything from getting into that interface, creating and, and constraining sketches, um, 3D solids, doing some of the assembly work and even documenting, doing some of the drawing work, um, showing motion, so on and so forth. So, so it's a pretty decent class. The folks that, uh, that have taken that class, um, the ones that, uh, that I've had the pleasure to work with, they've really enjoyed it and, and learned some great things. So we are, uh, we are happy to deliver that. Um, as you guys have seen before, we've got some, some document management solutions and, and um, we can uh, we can gladly provide you some different tools for connecting with your files allowing users outside of the engineering group to connect with those files working with uh, life cycles and backups 
as well as plotting things and different options for vault, um, as well as some, um, some other um, document management solutions. So this is our time for questions. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop this panel out here. And at this point, I'm not seeing any questions. That either means I deliver a great webinar or you guys are just bored out of your minds, one or the other. Do we have any questions at this point? Going once, going twice. Well, I am not seeing any. Ashley, if, um, if you want to step back in. Okay. Well, thanks, Kevin, for the presentation, and thank you all for attending. If you do think of questions later, you could simply reply to that confirmation or reminder email you receive from GoToWebinar, and we can get those um, to Kevin or your sales rep to get them answered. Uh, once again, a short survey will pop up as we close down, and also um, you'll get an email tomorrow with the recording link. So that is all for today, but have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you.